Hello everybody, it's Father DeRosa coming to you today for our daily preaching from the lawns of the federal courthouses just south of the parish. Uh, it's a beautiful day. It's one of the first really, really beautiful days that we've had in quite a while, so I had to get outside. And I wanted to um, talk today in the midst of, of such great beauty about the use of culture for evangelization. And I want to read you this quote from the life of Blessed Juvenile Ancina, talking about the use of culture for evangelization. The flute and the harp were taken out of profane and impure hands and bidden to praise the Lord. Song and poetry became means of insinuating piety instead of vice. Fables and romances were replaced by true and no less marvelous lives of the saints. The beauties of nature tended no longer to attract to dissipation and sin, but to preserve innocence and to raise minds to heaven. These very arts and means which had served so many avenues of vice were used by this great master to draw souls to heights of charity, to purity of life, to voluntary penance. It's beautiful, beautiful description of how culture can be used to um, evangelize, to, to spread the gospel. And one of the things that we notice, one of the patterns here is that um, culture is a tool and a tool unto itself is rarely good or bad. It's, it's all dependent on how you use the tool, right? So the tool of culture can be used to lesser and even evil ends, right? Uh, music can be used to stir vice, likewise poetry, literature, film, the internet, right? One of the things we've been seeing some stories about and hearing about is uh, in the midst of lockdown with so many people in sort of a more um, precarious position at home, a, a more uh, a weakened position where they're alone or bored or whatever, how um, pornography has uh, tried to sort of spread its wings in this situation, right? But dark culture, evil culture, su such as pornography or things that promote violence, uh, etc., these things are all the taking of good things, like for example, example, the beauty of the human body, or the use of uh, rhythm and poetry uh, in, in literature and music, etc., and turning them toward dark ends, right? We can, well, we should always feel confident, right? Uh, we are never on enemy territory, okay? And the arts, uh, co-opted as they may be in many cases, by sort of anti-evangelical forces, um, the arts are never our enemy, right? The arts are tools that we can use to turn toward the gospel and lift hearts and minds toward the Lord. One of the things that got me thinking about this, not just reading it, uh, that paragraph today, but really reading a lot of hagiography, that is to say the lives of the saints, uh, hagiography, hagios, holy ones, graphy, writing, writing about the holy ones, the biographies of the saints, reading uh, a lot of hagiography over the last couple of weeks, um, you know, what is hagiography except turning all of our words and our literary prowess toward describing lives of great holiness, right? So how do we use culture to lift our minds and hearts in this time? That's the question we want to ask ourselves. It's been really nice the last couple of weeks. Occasionally I'll have uh, what I call a socially distant happy hour at the rectory with some parishioners who live in the neighborhood. We get together, we everybody brings their own beverage, we sit at six feet apart, and we just talk. And we talk about philosophy and politics and history and local living and foodie type stuff and whatever, right? Um, and the discussion of all those different cultural topics by a group of Christian friends who are you know, always wanting to lift each other up and raise our minds and hearts to God helps us to do that. It's beautiful, right? Um, likewise, today, a parishioner stopped by who uh, is, has to work here in the area because of the nature of his job. And we sat and talked for an hour after he was done at the office about economics and science and, again, other forces of culture, which many people can turn toward dark ends, but we turn toward holy ends. 
Another reason why this is on my mind, besides reading the lives of the saints, this particular paragraph from the life, of, the life of Blessed Juvenal, and then these conversations and encounters I've had with parishioners, is that we're coming up on the Feast of the Ascension, when the Lord uh, um, shows us the way, right? He goes before, and where the head has gone before, the body has hope of following afterwards, right? He's literally lifting his body and soul into the glories of heaven. We also have, coming our way, the great feast, the solemnity of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit, the, the stuff of our ongoing relationship with the Father and the Son, descends into our hearts uh, to perfect his gifts, to renew them, and help us on earth to live and to taste the things of heaven. So we have two great feast days for lifting up our hearts and souls to the Lord that are coming our way, Ascension Thursday and Pentecost Sunday. Are we going to use them for that? Right? I, th I think we can. Uh, and to help us with that at the parish, we're going to continue our usual practice of bringing in friends from the artistic community and having beautiful sung masses. We've got choirs that are uh, sized to the uh, appropriate number of people for our social distancing. We're going to use the instruments of culture on the internet to live stream these things um, and have a beautiful opportunity to celebrate Ascension and to celebrate Pentecost. Uh, that's next Thursday, is Ascension Thursday, and then I think May 30th or 31st, whichever Sunday that is, uh, is Pentecost Sunday. So join us for that. But you know, people will sometimes ask, why does the church spend money on culture? Why, even in difficult times, would St. Mary's spend money on uh, bringing in beautiful singers for these great feast days? Well, it's, it's to praise God, but it's also to lift the hearts and minds of all who encounter this online to the things of God and to realize that whatever's going on in our day, we have hope. Whatever's going on in our day, we are not alone. We are not cut off from the Lord because we are always touched by that Holy Spirit. And so we use the things of culture to lift our hearts and minds to the Lord now in anticipation of one day rising with him forever. Go out, use those means, invite friends, share these uh, homilies, share our masses, uh, with people by connecting them to our Facebook page, etc. And uh, know that you'll be doing a beautiful thing by lifting up hearts and minds using the instruments of culture as Blessed Juvenal Ancina did and all the saints before us. God bless you. Know that I'm praying for you and thinking of you. Have a great day, everybody.